Hey, my name is Will. They say out with the old and in with the new. But what if you could take old consoles and bring them a new experience? Breathing life into consoles that have been discontinued by their creators. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new game for the NES that I think you should fire up your old console or favorite emulator and play. So kick back and relax whilst I talk about a game that both brought new life to my NES collection and inspired the idea for this video. But first, I'll just quickly say that this video is not sponsored, I purchased the game myself, and I made this video primarily for fun and discussion. So yeah, I hope you do enjoy. Micromages was a title that I first heard about in 2018 via its Kickstarter campaign. The game was advertised as a new game for the NES. The NES was my childhood console and it was something that we had for a very long time. When it came to NES games, my experiences were typically split into two categories. Officially released games that I played on cartridges, and fan-made mods that I played with emulators. At the time, playing mods of existing games was the main way I got to experience new things for the NES. Fan-made mods can vary in quality. Some are pretty simple graphic edits to give the game a fresh coat of paint, and others are much larger in scope and end up forming a brand new experience. So when I came across the Micromages Kickstarter, it immediately got my attention because this was a little different. See, mods are usually limited by what game they are built for, and though they can be made to feel like a whole new game, they are still more or less bound by the game they are built off. Also, unless you had a flash cartridge, these mods were usually played on an emulator. Which is fine, but it's not the same as popping in a real cartridge. Just to be clear, emulation is perfectly fine. Just, for me, there's an extra feeling of nostalgia involved using a cartridge and the original controller. It's part of the experience for me. But of course, to each their own, use whatever works for you and what you enjoy the most. Micromages was a new game built from the ground up for the NES that was also going to have a physical release. It was something that, at the time, I didn't even think of being a possibility. A new game being released on a cartridge for a console that was over 30 years old. It sent me down a rabbit hole and it turned out it wasn't that strange of an idea. There are a lot of games being made for older hardware, ranging from unofficial ports, to demakes, to whole new experiences. Anyway, back to Micromages. Though I wasn't able to back the Kickstarter at the time, I did end up picking up a copy of the game in 2019. So in preparation for this video, I played it again recently on my Twitch stream. The footage you're seeing now is captured from the Analog NT, which is just a fancy NES. So Micromages is a platforming game. The stages are vertical auto-scrolling stages where you need to keep climbing up and avoid obstacles and enemies along the way. As the title implies, everything in this game is very small, which not only gives the game its distinct style, but also allows the stages to feel pretty big despite being on the NES. Your character controls like a mix of modern Mario with wall jumps and classic Mega Man with its shooting aspects. There's also a couple of power-ups you can collect along the way. Whilst nice, they're not too groundbreaking. Mega Man and Mario games are something that were a major part of my childhood, so you better believe this game hit from a nostalgic point of view. The game has excellent music, and if you didn't know any better, you would think that this game is from the peak of the NES era, where graphics and sound design was mastered by developers. The game is a pretty short experience overall. It's split into four worlds, each with three stages, with an extra final stage in World 4. The bosses for each world are a lot of fun and look great. The boss fights are highly reminiscent of fights you would get in Mega Man, so they are a lot of fun. My favorite boss fight was the fight from World 3 where you fight a knight sitting in a chair. It was a lot of fun. The game also offers New Game Plus, which features the same four worlds, but with layout and enemy changes to make the game a little harder. It fits in with games from the NES era, as it was common for games to be shorter experiences, but also offer a harder mode to make up for it. A lot of love and care went into the design of this game. So much so that the developers went to the extra effort of making sure that the game didn't succumb to something that a lot of NES games suffered from back then. I'm talking about screen flickering and weird cropping. It's something that would happen when NES games would hit their limits. Even Super Mario Bros. 3, one of the best games of all time, was a game that had both flicker and cropping issues. At the time, it was so common that we didn't really think twice about it. I'm not exactly well versed in the technical explanation of this topic, but the developers released a video that goes in depth as to the sort of optimization they did to ensure that the game could be the best it could be visually. I left a link in the video description in case you're curious. The game also features 4-player multiplayer, which is something I haven't had a chance to experience yet, but it's pretty cool that it's included. And again, this all works on an NES. 
Sure, you can buy this game on Steam and play it that way, but the fact that everything I'm talking about here runs so smoothly on the NES is quite the achievement. And if you think all of this wasn't enough, the developers released an update to the PC version of the game last year that distributed a mod to provide a second quest. At the time of the making of this video, this second quest will also see a physical release along with two other games for the NES. So yeah, I look forward to checking it out once it's ready. And that's Micromages, a new experience for a console that you may have long forgotten about. The idea of developing games for older hardware is something that seems to be growing in popularity year by year. I really like the idea of being able to get use from older gaming devices and not just throwing them out. I mean, just because we are told these devices won't be supported anymore by their creators, doesn't mean that they aren't capable of delivering new experiences. We've reached the point where games no longer need to be more visually realistic than what was done previously. Developers are now making games where they have made the choice of having the graphics, gameplay, or sound design mimic the aesthetic of older hardware, and those experiences end up being pretty great. So it begs the question, why not just make the game for older hardware from the get-go, and then port it over with emulation for newer hardware? Well, there are now developers out there who have done exactly this. This was the inspiration for this video, and it's something that I'd like to explore more as there are a lot of other new games out there that run on old hardware that are worth talking about. I hope this video has sparked your interest in discovering something new for an old console that you still might have lying around. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video, as it will let me know that this is something people want to see more of in future. Or if you know of a newer game that runs on old hardware, be sure to share it. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is to hit that old like button. Or if you want to see me play through Micromages and more, be sure to check out my stream archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights Australian time if you want to catch me live. Well, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.